Hey, Dennis. How you doing today? Oh, I pay salad. I am fine. Thank you. How are they? Good, good. Hey, you know, I saw your Medium blog post on how Insider migrated uh, their data lake to Iceberg. And I really enjoyed it. And I was kind of wondering if you could get into maybe a little bit of the details, moving kind of from a pre to post iceberg world and how you brought your end users and producers data on that journey and maybe any best practices. That might be a lot of topics in one thing, you know, so kind of hit what you can. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. So I appreciate any time you could spend. Uh, okay, sure. Thank you, first of all. Uh, okay, so... As you said, we have migrated the whole data lake of Insider to Iceberg from uh, Apache Hive. But uh, so actually, let's start with why we are and then and migrated the whole data lake. And before that, let's start with why we are using the data lake at Insider. So what's our use case? Uh, actually, briefly, Insider is a SaaS uh, market platform with more than under uh, more than a thousand of clients. And my team is working on the recommendation and trade to customer segmentation products. And for that, we are using uh, the Christine data of our clients, and we are running thousands of spot jobs every day for uh, ETL and machine learning pipelines. So those spot jobs are basically reading and writing uh, terabytes of data every day. Uh, to and from our data lake, which happened to be a budget hard for the last like six or seven years. Uh, it was okay and uh, until like 2020, uh, I guess. And uh, but with the increasing number of clients and data, like we had, we start to have like excess amount of beer in in, in uh, for S3, uh, especially for S3, and uh, in Amazon, and uh, like we wanted to. Do, like start some post cutting as everyone uh, does nowadays. So we had some researches and we found out the pain points uh, that generated that cost. And we saw that like uh, higher than up uh, with the current uh, state of cloud, like it was designed with the HDFS in mind. There are lots of direct listings to find data files, etc. And those are translated to list bucket calls in S3. And like uh, there is a huge like we had a huge amount of and uh, 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 build for just directly listing or reading data, uh, but not storing the data. Like it was like five or six times more than for data, and it should be like the universe. Uh, so we ha- we had our on our homework and we find out that like I started can like fix this for us. So we we had our benchmarks and like we agreed upon to migrate to iceberg. But like as we had top nano hundreds of terabytes of data, it was uh, another challenge to migrate the own data like on production. So and also we just uh, didn't might just migrate from Hive to iceberg, but we changed our file format from ORC to Parker. Uh, we changed our uh, compression uh, algorithm from SNP to ZSTD. <laughs> and on top of that, we changed our own like, partition strategies for several tables, like real legacy masks, like which were created like six, seven years ago. And we don't want to uh, use those partition strategies now. So we have lots of to do on production. So we are taking. We are detected the migration of that thief, so we have to parallelize the migration jobs. Like we cannot just read all data and write at once. Mm-hmm. So we have got, we have like a spot job that can read that set of partitions for a given table and just migrate those partitions. As so we had like uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, partitions around, maybe one in a million. Uh, so we had to parallelize, and we had a red Redis backend, uh, which like keeps the method of uh, migration made to get like those table as those partitions, and those partitions are migrated. So each part job, like we had a ton of part jobs running for the migration, and then each job has like was a responsible for a table, 
and for the table that was like kind of smart jobs so that was like a lot of jobs hanging around and each job were asking to like greatest and uh, like which set of parts shall should I migrate for this job so so like that uh, we could orchestrate the jobs that are working for the same table to migrate uh, partitions that are not overlapping so we have been parallel the migration like this and it took us like one or two days to migrate all data and we use Grafana to monitor the process like as I said uh, like uh, around a million parts just we should know like and uh, what's the progress where it will be finished so we use the redis planning in Grafana so it showed us uh each like a uh, like a guy mark like uh, from zero to hundred percent for each table, so we could monitor and uh, what's the migration rate for each uh, table, and we could add extra spark jobs if we want to accelerate even more. So it took like two days to migrate all the job, like all the data, and then for the for the transition part, we had our producers to write into both five and iceberg tables. To like keep out the new data in both stores, and like we maintain the both data lakes for which I think work a week or two. So when they are synced, we migrated all the readers to Iceberg. And whoa, what a difference! Uh, like, first of all, like the performance wise, uh, we saw instantly around 20 to 25 percent. And an uh, uh, increase in uh, scoring performance because of the uh, less IO, and uh, like you had uh, much less files and as well compressed better. And due to that, we had less IO and the spark jobs were like more performant. So, any 25% more performance, so I'll listen to uh, less EMR than you see because in AWS. Which is great. <laughs> and that was cool, but like we got our the, like the biggest hit in S3 because, like as I said, our like the S3 code was real high for S3. So like icebergs solved a couple of problems there for us. Uh, first of all, like this part shop rolls out data in number of partitions, many files, like the default partition for spark is 200 and if you are just using that if you even want to write on one megabyte of data it just results to 200 files and by reading that you need to list and read 200 files like you have a list command and you have 200 add object and 200 get object commands and but using iceberg you know, uh, like it automatically accumulated the accumulated the, the party in data with variety, like allows back on the menu device, which is part of the and writes out a data in like 500 megabyte pieces. So in the previous example, you had one head and one get of object calls, which is like uh, one person of the previous one. So you have a maximum person both. Optimization basically. So, like in our AWS build, we saw like 90% decrease and uh, in our uh, 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 overall S3 cost and uh, for that uh, data lake. Like most of them was uh, then get objects and we had also cut the list bucket uh, calls because like Iceberg doesn't use the director listing. It just reads the metadata and uh, files out which data files to read. And just goes on either that. So you don't need to respect it. So like we had 90% of a cut in S3. And finally, as we don't need high meta store anymore, like you are using an RDS instance for the high meta store. You can also use a glue, but for this third reason, you are using RDS. So you are also free to terminate that RDS instance. So may combine the so we need the RDS instance, like 20% more per pound, is suitable to get more 
instances and a night person cut in S3, we ended up a five figure uh, amounts of decrease in our deal, which is like tremendous. Yeah. So that was our journey to migrate to Iceberg, our results, the journey and the effect in our AWS field, which was like, which made us and our uh, CTO very capital as well. Yeah, less files, smaller files. So you're doing less F opens, F closes. Those are expensive. That's great. I mean, that's a great payoff. And it sounds like uh, the way you set that up, that was quite a quite a balancing act. But it doesn't even sound like that took that long. Once I mean, a couple of days for that much stuff. That's pretty. That's really good, in my opinion. Right. It it but it was like one of the best. ROS that I have ever seen in collectors. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. I thank you sharing. Thank you for sharing that story with me. I really appreciate it. Yes, you're good. Thank you. All righty, you take care. Goodbye. Bye bye.